Hi, everybody. My name is Lenore von Stein, and this is an episode of The Facts. And uh, this is a discussion episode, and the, the second of two parts of a discussion with Jessica Feldman, Charlotte Meehan, and Christina Arnold. And, uh, excuse me. And uh, we're talking about, uh, I'm calling this thing art and its establishments. And I've had a very hard time. I've been an artist all my life, and constantly being said, pff, pff, I've had a very hard time with the establishments, all of the art establishments that I've fallen across, you know. They know what they can do with it. And um, so, and, but it's more than that. This, this, um, so that's, you asked me why I'm talking about this, because this is, you know, I'm boiling. So um, I, I, I'm also with, with the people that I know, my family, uh, many of the people I know, I'm in this unfortunate position that I think many artists are in, uh, where, uh, they say, you know, they say I'm not really an artist, although I've been an artist since I was 17, or even earlier. I'm not really an artist, and at the same time, I'm the lousy artist in the pack. You know, so you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. I saw something like this in a Woody Allen flick, where <laughs> where his 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 mother is, you know, he just won, you know, six awards or something, and they, you know, what are you doing with your life or something, you know? <laughs> and uh, so, uh, you know, and I and I wonder at the roots of this, uh, some of the roots of this, if it's if if you know if if everybody is essentially an artist, certainly when they're two years old, they all are. You know, it's mm -hmm. very clear, mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, and if, you know, in the course of socialization, you get all, you know, lined up and uh, you, you long for that, for not only that ability to, I mean, if life's journey is the, you know, the journey to be yourself mm -hmm. and to express yourself and also this, this, this idea of the, the bohemianism of the, of the art world, the freedom of the art world and what right have they? And you know, you you mm. you, you admire it and hate it at uh -huh. the same time because you're and 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 maybe that's a particularly high pitch uh, right now in the United States or you know for the, um, John, who's not with us, the other artist who was actually going to be sitting over here, John McGuire. Um, he tells this story that when he's he's living in Germany and uh, he he didn't pay the. He owed money on the gas and electric bill, and the gas and electric guy comes and he says, uh, "Mr. McGuire, the, the, the money." And 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 he says, "I'm sorry." John says, "I'm sorry. I'm, you know, I'll get on it." And and the gas guy says, uh, are, "Are you a composer?" And John said, "Yes." And and the guy the guy was very reverential behind that. That's a very un-American uh, uh, portrait of an attitude towards somebody who does this particular kind of work because it is a particular kind of work mm -hmm. it is a job whether or not people you know you know the mixed feelings that people have about it. and I'm wondering if you could s speak to this thing of if, if you of course if you agreed with it of the <laughs> the roots mm -hmm. of this mixed feeling mm -hmm. towards the art this hostility towards the arts you know it's coupled with the uh, you know, whatever, the contradictions, the admiration. Any ideas here? Yeah. It reminds me of a story of Andre Masson coming into this country during World War II with his Jewish wife. They had to flee France. And he arrived at the customs here, and he had to open up his portfolio for the customs officer who saw a lot of portraits of nudes and confiscated them and destroyed them. And he said, and I think it's a, such a great line about America, you have no mythology. Hmm. And I think that we do love art in this country. We just don't think the people who make it are legitimate. And it's a threat. And in this country, I think especially, it's a threat to the way you're supposed to live your life to keep this system going. And being an artist is not living your life in a way that keeps this system going. It's actually an intervention. 
yeah. an intervention. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we have a mythology, and the mythology is the American dream. Yes. Right? <laughs> and art does not work in that mythology. Um, and I think, you know, I actually think we kind of spend a, I, I personally am, have like been really committed to making public art and reaching, trying to reach an audience and intervene politically, but I also think we spend, we as artists spend a lot of time apologizing mm -hmm. for what we do and trying to prove our social worth. But then I'm like, wait a second, there are people who get paid, you know, 300 times what we get paid and they spend their days defending, you know, companies that steal money from other companies mm -hmm. or selling sneakers or, you know, things that really, like, I'm pretty sure aren't more valuable. I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they don't have to apologize. But so I, I think the resentment maybe actually comes from the justification for living the other kind of life, right? Like, but I have sacrificed so much so that I could make money, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I've given up my dreams to do X, Y, Z, which is more responsible and which is more, you know, accountable. Mm -hmm. And I think the word, this idea of responsibility and accountability gets, gets perverted in my mind, right? Like, you know, to not be accountable to yourself, but instead be accountable to a value system that you maybe haven't interrogated or has been ingrained in you from a really early age. Um, it reminded me of, I, I know somebody who's a, a sh remaining nameless, who's, whose husband is an artist and she's a financial analyst and um, she's very bitter about his, uh, you, know, you know, he doesn't, I don't know how she puts it, but it's something like, you know, he doesn't really know what it's like to go to work. You know, I have to go to work and, you know, do this crappy job, you know, in this little cubicle, and I make a lot of money for it. I'm not always sure that it's ethically correct what I'm doing. I don't know if I'm on the right or the wrong side of this particular argument, but uh, I have to do this. And he, you know, he's freelance and he works every now and then, and, you know, and I'm this, and it's, it's, and if, I haven't said it, but uh, on the tip of my tongue is, you know, so why don't, why are you doing this? I mean, why, why, why are you doing this? Uh, if it is, you know, it, and, and I, because I think what, I guess partly what I think her answer would be is that I really don't have any choice. Mm -hmm. it, you know, yeah. I don't know any yes. other way to play mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And that makes me angry too. Right, and, and I like the idea of being an artist as an intervention, mm -hmm. because I think it's really true, it does. And, I, I, financial analyst. That's one of the jobs where I'm like, now, I don't understand what what you do. Like you go, <laughs> yeah. like do you go into an office and then what? Like numbers appear. Like because part for me being an artist is making something physical, out of other things. So it's object oriented. It's thing oriented. It's materials oriented. Financial analyst seems like magic, mm. um, and I understand that possibly this is an important thing and lots of people do it. Um, possibly. <laughs> mm. uh, but as an, being an artist is an intervention, when I tell people, when people ask me what I do, I usually say I teach because it's easier. Um, and, and again, living in Kentucky, living in New York City, it's probably different. You're an artist. People understand that in a different way. I lived in Nashville for a long time, so being in Nashville, a musician, people understand that because everybody's a musician. Um, but being an artist, it, then the next question is, oh, do you paint portraits? Because that's kind of, that's what fits in the box. Mm -hmm. And I think there is a, not a mythology, you're right, the American dream is our mythology, but there's this, people want to be able to be free and they see artists as sort of this freedom to do whatever you want to do and you can just yeah. make your own schedule and, and so they do get angry and, and don't realize that we also have to function within a, a system of money mm -hmm. because you can't just live on nothing. Yeah. And you also have to be disciplined to make the thing. You got to finish the play, right? You got to yes. write this this sucker, and you know, rehearse it, and you know. I mean, it it's a it's money for nothing. I mean, that's that's or, the, or, the theory of what or art, art is. for nothing. You know, yeah, I mean, it's money yeah. for nothing, and your checks for free. What is speculative capitalism? Then? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. that doesn't seem very concrete either. Um, yeah. Oh, that was that's the end of my that's question. The end. Yeah, okay, let me let me let me, let me, let me, let me, let me uh, 
So, so, are there, are there, are there? Sorry, can I go back to that yeah. question? Yeah. Um, so, being an artist is your own path. We talked about this a little bit in the previous program, um, and. It, there is a freedom, like we said, I think that's what other people are jealous of, which makes them angry, but it is tough because carving your own path, and maybe your friend who's a financial analyst, it doesn't know what else to do because it's difficult to put one foot in front of the other when the road isn't there. You're kind of building the road as you, as you step forward. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I think people see me in my studio drawing, well, how can that be hard? Well, that's not the hard part. Like, that's, it is hard to kind of like be self-disciplined and come up with ideas. But the hard part is, you talked about it, in a, in a system that values money and exchange of money for goods, if you're not involved in that system, mm -hmm. how do we value ourselves? Yeah. And it, so that's the hard part, I think, is, is every day justifying to yourself what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It does matter, even though we're in a pur sort of a puritanical society that believes in hard work and things to show for it and being involved in a respectable, upstanding way, having a nice house, a big car. And I think we have to constant, at least I'll speak for my form, in the theater I'm constantly having to, to contextualize where my work belongs on a continuum because it, it, the kind of plays that I write really aren't seen at all in the mainstream on American stages or even in the quote unquote nonprofit theater, which there's a big discussion now about how the nonprofit theater in America is not really the nonprofit theater oh, anymore. It's just a little baby Broadway. It's baby Broadway. <laughs> and and regarding legitimacy in what I do, whenever I've tell have told people I'm a playwright, unless they're in the theater, they say, Would I have seen something of yours on Broadway? You know, as if and I Do you always paint portraits? It's the same kind of question, and I always say no, and you never will, because that's not the right place for my work. And that is, it's hard to say that with a tone that doesn't come across as hostile, and I don't want to be hostile, but I do want to educate. That's not the only theater there is in America. Yeah. <laughs> but it certainly is the only one that gets talked about in the all the news that's fit to print newspaper. Yes. You know, so... That's the part that I find difficult. It's not, you know, writing plays is of course difficult, but it's my choice to take on that difficult task. It wasn't my choice to also have to find a place in the world and create that space for my work and for the work of others that I think is so important. However, I'm really happy that I've done it. And that's the part about the purple crayon and mm -hmm. finding your own path. I realize that I have a lot more agency doing it this way. Mm than I would constantly knocking on doors, back or front, that would be closed to me. <laughs> right, right, and yeah, yeah. you know. It's, yeah, it's not just difficult to be making the thing, but to be also crafting the entire environment. Right. And as teachers, as members of communities we like, pulling others in and along with us. And I think that what you've done with Sleeping Weasel, I think is really interesting, um, because it's, and important and kind of inspirational, it's, it's making that community. Because as, I think as actors within a community, whether you're actors or visual artists or musicians, um, you're stronger and you're not creating the entire, you're not building the whole house by yourself. Mm -hmm. And figuring out how to do that, I think, mm -hmm. is really critical and interesting. And, and creating the collective organism rather than the skyrocketing single career is also an intervention for me. Yes. Right. Because you yes. could take any one of my artists, myself included, and say, oh, really smart, but way out, you know, really interesting, but oh no. You put 30 of us together and it's really hard to deny the power right. of this group of people. And I'm really interested in everyone doing well, not just myself. And that feels like a more holistic, better way to live as an artist, it feels more artistic to me. Right, and I wonder about that because often the people you hear about um, in the mainstream media, wherever, the ones who make it also have enormous egos and so they rock it up by themselves mm -hmm. and it makes you wonder, is that the only way to do it? And to me it doesn't feel, that doesn't feel right, you I know? I think there are, I think there are uh, to these points, I think there are two things, one that I, I the, the, the 
the, the search for truth, which I find, you know, at, at, at the crux of what I'm doing, and really hard, you know, constantly, constantly stepping over my own lies uh, to myself, <laughs> my own cliches, my, and, and, and having to find, again, the, the courage literally the courage which is not something that my craft you know I have some craft so I have some skills that help me to you know to, to relax enough to maybe you know to let mm -hmm. my soul fall out of my mouth which is what I'm trying to do uh, but it's uh, you know it's finding the courage to do that and every time I cross one of those mountains every time I do something that makes me very uncomfortable and I've done performances that really I'm, I'm so upset and I'm so worried and I you know the little sometimes after the performance little gatherings and stuff and I'm still so disturbed I think I've really embarrassed myself and I have to remind myself that that is meaningful that that meant that I did some good work you yeah. know it wasn't so mm -hmm. pleasant to do that so when we talk about the acceptance of art in a capitalist society, the acceptance of art in this American society, in this, in this search for truth, which seemed, you know, with, it, it, it's, it's such a, a chilling and kind of stupid phrase, but I don't have any other one for it. It, it really is antithetical to so much that is, is on board. You want to know why? You know, I mean, I, uh, there was something else I was going to speak to that you spoke to, but now it's 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 out of my head. You know, you want to, you know, this guy Anthony Weiner who's running oh, yeah. it, <laughs> running. Unfortunate <laughs> name. Even unfortunate name, right? <laughs> or appropriate, I yeah. guess. And I was telling somebody this story, and this is such a you know typical modern American story in some ways, aside from his disease, you know. But the, in the beginning, when the stuff comes out that he's been sending out pictures of himself, new pictures of himself to people and to women, and he says, no, I, they set me up, they set me up, they set me up, they set me up, it wasn't me. And then the enough evidence mounts, and he says, okay, it was me. Mm. You know, I mean, it's, it's just incredible. It's mm. just incredible. And then it goes back on to, you know, it's just... And, and so the next step in the society is to understand more about this disease after they mm. make all these, you know, snarky mm. cracks, you know, all these ignorant snarky mm. cracks about what's going on with this guy. And this, this, this I mean, it's like I'm, 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 I'm in a crazy place, you know, <laughs> a crazy world, you know. Uh, uh, yes, you are. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they don't, it's, uh, so anyway, this, this, when we talk about, you know, one of the things we were going to talk about here is teaching, you know, teaching this, this thing of, of, of telling, of looking for the truth, which is the way that I gauge what I'm doing. Did I, mm. did I just give myself an insight that I didn't have before? Because it was already there, but I wasn't going to, you know, cop to it because it was too scary you know it just it's funny this idea of the truth because I think in my work I present contradiction constantly as a means to the truth for myself so I I lay out a lot of impossible juxtapositions of dialogue and 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 hypocrisy um, and try to get to that without judgment on my characters try to lay out, yeah, well, this is the world we're living in. Um, and so sometimes there's a deep truth in a very small part of a play that's mine. It's, it's my own secret truth. But it lives in there among a lot of other stuff. Um, and I hope that somehow to accumulate a truth for each individual that they can hang on to in different parts of a piece, but that isn't sort of like one guiding principle that I'm leading people to that is my truth, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like very much this idea of juxtaposition and contradiction, and I think that is, that is part of our job. And I don't think that's anybody else's job, so I guess it must be ours. <laughs> Which is to here, here. take something and make it seen in a way that it couldn't be seen before. And a lot of what my work has been about recently, especially in public spaces, you know, take a prison cell and put it in the middle of Soho. Mm -hmm. Take someone confessing like their sexual indiscretions and like broadcast it downtown, you know? And so, and it, there are implicit politics and ideologies to that, but there are open questions too, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I feel like it, if we can open up a place where there is this like, there's sensuality and there's discomfort and there's 
ideas and there's discourse, we're doing a lot, you know, and, and that's a lot different than saying how it should be. Mm -hmm. It's a lot different. Right, and as, and as artists, I think, too, we present a multiplicity of ideas, we present layers, we present, you're talking about multiple truths with mm -hmm. one truth that's mm -hmm. buried that people may or may not find. And I think that that's, it, it, when we, when I ask somebody to engage in my work, or as artists, that's what we're, we're doing, we're putting it out there for people, people to engage with. Um, it's not sort of a Socratic method, like follow me down this path and you will get to the right answer. Mm -hmm. it's, it's interactive in a different way, I think, which is here are a bunch of building blocks and put these things together. And um, the past episode talking about what does art do, it asks the big questions. And I hope then also maybe provides people with some data points that they can put together to come up with some answers. And it's not necessarily my answer. Um, because sometimes I'm going through the process of making the piece to work out the question too. Yeah, me too. I, I'm, I'm usually like, follow me down this path as I figure out how little I know. <laughs> right, as, but in the process of like deconstructing a situation or a material, you kind of come to reveal its complexities in a way that you wouldn't have seen before, I think. Right, and to pull that through into teaching too, because I think your question sort of addressed teaching. I think it's interesting talking about your process, you have a secret truth that's only for you. And I think so many of our students have that as well. And as mm -hmm. teachers, I don't necessarily want them to tell me their secret truth, but I'm, and, and they don't want to tell me, mm -hmm. like, no, that's theirs. Mm -hmm. But how do I help? I, I'm not the type of teacher who wants them to become the artist I think they should uh -huh. be or like me. I want them to become the type of artist that they want to be better at that, but how do I know what that is? Especially when they don't necessarily know what that is. And, and or they're holding it so cl you know, close to the chest because they think I'll laugh at them or someone else will or someone will find out. Um, so it's a dance, I mean, it's complicated. Yes. And I guess one thing you do is you show them lots of examples, okay. going back to history. and. Um, or trick them. Don't tell them it's art history. Tell them it's problem solving. Other people have already solved this for you, so <laughs> pick what you like. Um, give them activities, exercises that are open ended. You know, help them sort of walk down that path that's theirs. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, kind of finding multiple paths because, as artists, I think we meander a lot. Mm -hmm. I think that's part and of we our need process. To. Mm -hmm. We absolutely need to, and even in terms of coming upon something and they might read or see that they are, you know, just too confused by. Like a Gertrude Stein play I once showed my students. Um, it was circ the circle play. We don't understand it at all. And I said, well, take 10 minutes and invent an understanding of the play. Just invent how you understand this play. Make it up. Of course, we came to find out they all understood the play. <laughs> but I think that in our educational system, that kind of spontaneous free flow of connecting with something you read that's not just so linear really gets taken out of them. Yeah, just like walking around a museum and you got these little headphones exactly. on and this is what the yeah. painting is about or this is, you know, and, and, you know, the painting is about what I think it's about, you know, it's about the way, it's my relationship to this painting. If I can, if I can, to the level which I can, whatever, relax my eyes enough mm -hmm. to really look at it or to mm -hmm. look at it, you know, whatever, you know, it's my, there's, there is no right or wrong interpretation of this thing and this idea, and I think that's what, what at this point it's, it's it's so strangulating to so many people in, in in terms of their relationship to art that they that they I mean I go to concerts at, at you know fancy halls and I see these people listening to this very modern music I think what are, what are they doing sitting here why are they why how can they possibly be enjoying this stuff they think they should be here maybe mm -hmm. but I don't think that they really they really like it I don't know uh, it doesn't strike me that way and. That's you know art as a as a as a as a as something you must is is like a chore uh -huh. you know something that and and that we're two minutes from the end of Shangri La here <laughs> and um, 
just to let you know. Um, well, and I think that, and one of the things my students get frustrated in sometimes too is, well, then art can be anything. And, and I say, well, yeah. no, I don't think so. And well, art can mean anything. No, there are clues in there. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that there is a right answer. It's that there's multiple right answers. Mm -hmm. And they could probably come up with a wrong answer. You know, that your students probably could have come up with a wrong, wrong interpretation um, that was just completely not supported by mm -hmm. the document itself. I mean, I think that's, mm -hmm. we need to look at a painting, look at a play, mm -hmm. look at, listen to a piece of music. And there are, and I'm certainly not the person to tell you, you're wrong, you're wrong. But I think there are maybe answers that are more correct, mm -hmm. that are supported by more evidence that we're given. Let me, let me read you this James Baldwin quote. Mm. Uh, success is an American word which cannot conceivably, unless it is defined in an extremely severe, ironical, and painful way, have any place in the vocabulary of any artist. Uh, and another uh, that I don't know whether it's Tennessee Williams or Harold Clerman, uh, the fearful dependence on success is crippling to creation. We're very close to the end. Let me tell everybody so that you know who I'm sitting here with, just in case you didn't know. Uh, I'm sitting here with Christina Arnold, Charlotte Meehan, Jessica Feldman. All of these people are artists. Uh, serious artists. We're all serious <laughs> artists doing, doing important work for, uh, for, uh, for ourselves and for others. And uh, so this is Lenore von Stein uh, and this is yet another episode of The Facts. You can catch us. I'm not sure what these little numbers are saying to me, but anyway, you can catch us online and uh, www.1687.org. You can whatever. Bye.